Hello, 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 and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be bringing you something hmm, that I've received quite a few requests for, actually, uh, ever since I posted my show-and-tell video of my Nomoria colony, and that is, well, doesn't take a genius, Nomoria. Now, uh, for those of you who are totally unfamiliar with the game, or the style of game, Nomoria is a game that plays out the best way to describe it would be to say it's similar to Dwarf Fortress. The problem is, if you say that, people are saying, are, are expecting a game that is Dwarf Fortress. So a game that is as hard and or as unforgiving or as unhelpful or as stylistically the same or as complex or whatever as Dwarf Fortress. Nomoria is its own game. It feels no obligation to try and do things the way that uh, Dwarf Fortress does things. And, uh... Honestly, that's a good thing, not a bad thing, because there's a lot of people who would like a game like Door Fortress, but couldn't bear to start a game like Door Fortress because of its interface, because of its unforgivingly non-intuitive nature, etc., etc. And while I will grant that I wasn't able to really start playing this game until I had a friend spend the first half hour or so showing me how to do things and what to do, um... Yeah, I, I, uh, or not, not Dwarf Fortress, Nomoria. Uh, I found Nomoria after that first half hour hour of tutorial to be quite intuitive and ended up playing several hours worth of the game. Uh, I have a colony that's up and running on normal difficulty and a colony that's up and running on a no enemy difficulty at this point. Though I have not really gotten past year two, I think. I'm halfway through year two or year three. And, frankly, the, the, the frequency of combat has become a little bit more significant. My goal for today is to show those of you who are curious about the game what the game looks like when you're getting started up, and uh, to sort of walk you through the founding of a Nemoria colony. And for those of you who already have the game and haven't maybe gotten into it or can't really figure it out, maybe my introduction will be what it takes to get you started on your road to being your own administrator. So, that's about enough yammering on my part. Let's uh, go ahead and generate our standard kingdom, standard difficulty. Uh, uh, I'm going to flip over to advanced uh, settings and do a preview. Increase enemy strength over time. Enemy strength increases over time in addition to kingdom worth. Okay. So normally the enemy in strength only increases relative to kingdom worth is what I'm taking away from this. There's an attack rate, an enemy strength, and an attack size. Sure. Uh, preview. This will show me the map in all of its glory. Okay, this map looks very hilly. It would be very difficult to find flat farmland on a map like this. I could deforest this area pretty well, and then use this as one broad farm base, and this as another. Um, but honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I would rather see a different kingdom, so... Go ahead and preview me a new kingdom, please. I'm just changing the seed. That's legit, because their random algorithm would do the same. Uh, if I set up a colony here, dug my way into the mountains, or we could set up a colony here and use the massive uh, existing apple orchard in favor of not having a strawberry orchard, maybe? But, or we, yeah, we could run here, dig this side out, make a real grove of some kind here, dig our way into the mountains for our primary colony. This is a reasonable seed. Uh, let's do two more, so that's two, three, one, two. Yada, 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 yada. Oh, this map I like. I like it a lot. There are no fruit trees. That's going to be difficult, honestly. Uh, there's this nice little hutch that I could dig a secondary area into. And then we have this very steep mountain up here. That should make for easy metal finding if I dig into that. This area is going to be decent for one or two farms and a uh, pasture of some kind. This could serve as a secondary area, I guess. This is a this is a decent map. I could actually possibly run with this map. The only problem is just up front. I'm not seeing any fruit trees of any kind. Uh, yeah. But as, as you can probably tell, the thing I'm really looking for is... Whoa! Okay, this map has virtually no flat land, but it is covered in fruit trees. Which could actually prove to be a big enough benefit to offset that downside. 
I can always, you know, terraform by removing this top piece, turning it into flat land, have one farm farm bank up here, clear out these trees and make another farm here, dig my way into the mountain here. But there's really very little room for pasturing. And then at the end of the day, what I'm going to end up doing is just running random anyway, probably, because, you know, who's got the patience for what I'm doing here? I think I already previewed this one. Whatever, this is fine. We'll go with this. I, I, I shouldn't be too picky, because that teaches you guys the wrong lesson. Um, The name, the name, the name, the name. The name is, of course, important. We're going to call this land, uh, this land. I think we should call it your grave. Ah, curse your sudden but inevitable treasury. treachery. Alright, now I've had issues with my generation algorithm, wherein uh, it takes, it always takes a while to generate, but I've had issues where it doesn't generate the map I previewed, so if that happens, all bets are off with regards to how I spent time looking at my map. But let's, uh, let's let it load up, and then I will start explaining stuff to you guys. Blah, 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 blah. And this is definitely going to be a tutorial-esque game. I'm not going to just be doing things without explanation. I'm going to be telling you what I'm doing and how it's working and showing you my ticks and trips, tricks and tips to get things to go. Um, the video is probably going to end up being quite long as a result, so I'll break it into segments. But uh, I do plan to get out most, if not all of it, at least the initial phases to get through the first season in, in one day. Oh yeah, this is totally not the map I was previewing. So first things first, go to options, controls, I want you to set up a few hotkeys before anything else. Uh, and the, the first of those is the, I changed depth, uh, for, I turned off depth uh, hotkeys since the mouse scroll wheel is more than inadequate for that. Uh, I want you to take note of the fact you can rotate the map with comma and period, because it took me a while to realize that. These default to a, co a combination of, I want to say, left shift plus and left shift minus or something like that. That's kind of confusing, so I just changed it to minus plus, and I found this to be hugely helpful. Um, and the other bookmarks, I have a few other bookmarks or uh, hotkeys that I like. I don't, I'm not going to insist on them just now. Uh, when when I get to the point that I'm actually using them, I will tell you about them more. The other ones that I like a lot are remove designation and cancel job on delete and insert respectively because when I think of remove designation I think of hitting the delete key and when I think of oh wait I mean to undo that I think of the delete key but it's already taken so I use the one above it deconstruct is a similar uh, logical function but I don't use it often enough to require a hotkey okay let's resume the map let's begin by zooming out and uh, let me explain what it is you're looking at uh, again this is clearly a tutorial video and therefore going to be aimed at the level of people who do not know the game at all uh, so expect that for those of you who are out there wondering what kind of administrator I make and getting annoyed um, you'll notice that right now we are looking at sweeping hills uh, at various depths so this is probably depth 0 uh, this is depth 1 no no this is depth minus 1 0 and 1 respectively and then we're looking at these areas where we see brown dirt followed by gray, grayish black unknown tiles. That's the way this game does uh, rendering. Notice that I'm at depth 1. I'm going to use the mouse scroll wheel to go all the way to the maximum depth, or like all the way higher up, so depth 16 above the ground. Now you can see that the full shape of the contours of the hill are like so. And as I go down layer by layer... Okay, now we're at depth eight, 9, and the top of this mountain has been sliced off because at depth 9 we're looking at these ramps and we don't see anything above that depth. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, 2, minus 3. And here it becomes unknown completely. I have no idea what's at depth minus 3 based on what I've seen so far. The game typically renders, I want to say, 100 depths uh, 100, 102 depths. I don't know if that's a hard limit or just the limit of the maps I've played so far. Okay, so much for that. Uh, what else is what else is important to explain? This little bundle right here are your are are what you start with. 
Uh, it looks like two gnomes, but it is actually a series of uh, about nine or ten gnomes. Uh, I can actually best show you that on this menu. All stacked onto a few tiles. They are idle because I have yet to give them tasks to do. In addition, they have their supplies. A couple yaks, some strawberry wine, uh, a bunch of wheat, about 32 pieces, a bunch of seeds, both for wheat planting, as well as for... Come on now, I know you're here. Strawberry planting. You can see all the strawberry seeds they have. And then a crate full of a lot of things. They've got their weapons crate, they've got their strawberry crate, strawberry crate, and their food crate, so loaves of white wheat bread, and blah 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 blah. One man, enough to equip one man with a hammer, breastplate, and helmet, and then bandages to, you know, patch up our wound wounded. That's what we start our settlement with, and it's actually more than enough to get you jump started through the first couple seasons. Uh, first couple seasons. So, next question is, where do we want to live? I see a couple obvious candidates. The first big thing you're looking for when you uh, decide on where to live is good a, a large area of flat land that can fit your farm and your grazing animals. Uh, on this map, I'm seeing a couple areas. Uh, I see this little di uh, recessed U-shape here, which is kind of nice. And I see this uh, sweeping expanse here, with the added advantage that this upper ridge is a good bit of flatland, and this upper ridge is another great bit of flatland. In the end, though, my deci the deciding factor for me is going to be the trees. You see, there are all these fruit trees here, orange and apple, respectively. And you can actually click on the, the tile to get a list of everything on that tile, including its floor, which is dirt, and orange tree, or apple tree. Um, so the presence of those trees could make for a, a really good alternate source of food and would make, decrease my reliance on strawberries significantly. And more, more, less important than the, the food value of the, the fruit is the drink. You, may, you distill fruits into really good drinks. So I think I'm going to choose this area for my settlement. Okay, that's part A. Let's go through the various things that you need to set up for your gnome settlement. First things first, planting stuff. Uh, we've got all of these seeds in Miss Dance to Reason. We want to plant them, yes? In this game, you don't directly build stuff, generally. Rather, you set up orders and zone areas, and your gnomes decide, Okay, I'm a farmer. There's farmland. It needs doing. I will do it. That's that's basically the flow of the game. Um, so I'm going to go to Agriculture Farm and designate an area as farmland. You could also go to designate area as farmland. It's the same basic command. Uh, let's see, where do I want to put my farm? Hmm. Forward thinking. I'm not discussing the finer points of my logic with you guys just now because I kind of want to go more for game, overall gameplay. But I'm mentally, this is just to guess and check how much area I have here. That's 266 tiles. I If I made an expansive farm that big, I could hold enough wheat for a full-grown colony, eventually. So I'm... Or, you know, and I can expand it up the side of this hill also. So I think this is a good spot for my wheat farm. And I'm going to begin by de declaring my wheat farm. 7x7 seven seven is about all you need. I'm, I'm de early on. I'm declaring it overly large on purpose, just so that I don't accidentally bump it. Wheat farm. You can name your stuff, uh, your zones. The next thing I want to point out is, uh, much like in SimCity, the game is on pause right now while I decide uh, what I'm doing, so I don't have to worry about going fast. These strawberry plants were left out of the painted area, because you can't legally start a farm over the existing strawberries. Uh, in order to get rid of them so that I can include that, those squares in the farm later, I'm going to go to Agriculture and Forage. And you'll notice that it now excludes the squares that don't have strawberries and or are included in the farmland. But once I'm done foraging, those strawberries will be picked and the... Excuse me. And the juicy, juicy farmland beneath will be available for me to use. You'll also notice these two tiles are in green right now. Reason for that is the farmers have already decided this is their top priority, and they're going to start building this wheat farm here. And that's their next destination. Okay, good on them. 
I'm going to modify my wheat farm slightly and do one more thing, which I'll explain later. That is, I'm going to raise its priority to four. It is now one of the more important tasks, unlike, say, foraging these bushes, which is going to be an ordinary uh, task to get done eventually, when the queue reaches it. Okay. Next, I can designate more farmland uh, for strawberries. Here I want to keep a smaller patch, relatively speaking, of land. Also, given all of the trees that I have available to me, um, I may not even bother expanding a strawberry farm that much. So let's just keep a nice area here. And you'll notice that I'm literally just putting it right over all of this stuff that I intend to get rid of later. I have uh, 26 tiles, which should be enough to include my initial bat. No, it's not enough to include my initial batch of seeds. I'm going to need to expand that farm. Uh, tell you what, go ahead and agriculture me and destroy these trees that are in the way and uh, forage me whatever that those resources are. It looks like cotton along with some strawberries. Alright, between the, those two operations... No, it undid my, my fell command with forage because... Uh, yeah, because you can technically forage fruit trees as well as, whatchamacallit, fell them. So I'm just reordering. I actually want the trees cut down. So this whole area, I'm going to be able to add a bunch of strawberry plots and then expand it out this way a little bit more. And that's going to be sufficient for my strawberry needs for the moment because all these fruits can act as strawberries. I effectively have that many more strawberries than I would ever need to start with. Okay, what else? So... Now we have taken care of, of our initial resources, orders for the seeds, right? Well, I guess not so much orders. We haven't done anything with cotton yet, but I can do that later anyway. Uh, next thing up is these two yaks of ours. What are they going to do with them? Clearly we need a place to put the yaks so that they can graze and be pastured. Uh, my place for the yaks. That's an excellent question. They too need flat grazing land. Um, I designate this area a yak pasture, and you'll notice that it tells me it is large enough to contain three yaks. That is not the same as being large enough to contain a whole bunch of yaks, which is what I would like. Uh, so let's see how big I can expand that area locally. Nine yaks is much more respectable. If I get to the point of having nine yaks and this space feels inadequate, I can potentially uh, cut my way into this mountain and expand it in this direction a little bit more, or I can push my way east a little bit or northeast a little bit and uh, expand that a little bit more. Or worst case scenario, if if it's a big enough deal, I can relocate them here somewhere and just build a whole new pen for them. So for the moment, let's do this designation properly. Uh, and I'm going to make a small enough pen that it doesn't get in the way of everything else. 8 by 7 should be enough to, to pasture me a couple of yaks. 4 yaks is plenty. The rancher is responsible for bringing the yaks and setting them up in that pen. Uh, now, the other question is what will yaks eat? They don't want them to starve after all. Uh, they're allowed to eat any kind of straw, in my case wheat straw, which is a rather precious resource early on. So I'm going to designate this square right in the middle of their pen that was in disincluded as a stockpile. Uh, I'm debating whether or not this is a good time to explain stockpiles. Yes, I think it is. Stockpiles are a concept you really need to understand when playing uh, Nomoria. If a dwarf, dwarf, I keep saying dwarf, if a gnome is at liberty to, com to conduct carrying tasks for whatever reason, they will look at the list of items that are available, such as fruits that are sitting on the ground, or in our case, starting here, all these barrels and all this stuff inside them. And they will say, I wonder where I can put this legitimately. If an area has not been designated for storage, so designated for stockpile or storage, then there's no way that they have a place to put it. If an area has been designated for storage, again, the question is, what is it allowed to store? 
this is a list of all possible items in the game, mostly. Uh, and it's broken down in the same order that building them is broken down, so you very quickly get used to finding what you're looking for. Um, I, in my case, underneath goods, and uh, I'm assuming plants, straw, wheat, so all forms of straw. This stockpile has now been permitted to carry straw and nothing else. So naturally, uh, my gnomes are going to be like, Oh, this place is allowed to have straw. I see straw that hasn't been stockpiled yet. Two and two makes four, and they will carry it over here for me. I'll call it wheat feed, since this is actually there to feed the yaks. And this is something that I could raise the priority if I was worried about it not getting done. Uh, I think I will. I would rather prioritize wheat storage here to wheat storage wherever else I might have more general use for wheat. Se or not wheat, for wheat straw. Because I don't want my yaks to starve. Okay, so what have we set up so far? One, we've set up farms. Two, we've set up pasturing. Let's go to option three. What are we going to do with all these trees? Clearly, pardon me, clearly our stock of wood is low on account of the fact that it's not even listed here and I don't really have any of it. You get wood by getting logs. You get logs by chopping down trees. You do that with your tree cutters. We have these trees already set for deforestation, which is excellent. Uh, I'm going to use the depth meter to, you know, isolate where the trees are at the lowest level. Because while these might, I might want to keep for a maintained grove of some kind, these I clearly have no use for. They're, they're at the low level and that where it irritates me. So, let's go straight for Normally I would be more conservative and I would cut clippings off these trees first so I could replant them. But in this map I have so many trees to work with, I'm not worried about losing these ones altogether. So let us agriculturally fell all these trees on this level and that will give me a little bit more a working room in my u-shape on the bottom especially this area though I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it just yet maybe I can expand my pasture in that direction I don't know we'll see okay so now we have gotten we have a bit let's look at what we've done here we've assigned we've given our farmers work we've given our rancher work our woodcutter work what about our miner in Nemoria, while there is no stated goal of the game, the artificial goal of the game is to build a thriving colony that can survive attack and that can increase its worth. You do this by crafting items. That requires resources to craft with, which requires... Ooh, that should not have been included in the work order. Please get rid of it. Thank you. Uh, that includes... Yeah, that requires digging. So, let us go ahead and set up our miners to dig their way into wherever our new home will be. There's a lot of options. I personally am thinking this mountain right here would make for a good home. Uh, despite the fact that it's pretty close to this aqua, which is kind of annoying. Or this water, which is kind of annoying, but whatever. So, first order is going to be terrain. Remove the ramp. Remove the ramp here, which is the doorway to my colony, so that I can get inside. Actually... Let's put the doorway to the colony here. And my reasons for doing that what are not immediately clear. It's kind of long term ish, and I'd rather not discuss it. Okay, I'll remove that ramp and then initiate a dig order. So, terrain, dig, no, not dig, remove, remove a wall. And this is the. Okay, I clicked the wrong button. Terrain, mine remove wall. There we go. And I'm going to paint a line that I want my miners to work off of. Now I actually have mine remove wall hotkey to X so I can just tap X and get that same command. And I, I can strongly recommend this hotkey. It, it saves me a ton of time. I'm going to go ahead and paint out a vast corridor system that I kind of want paint, uh, worked out. Um, the big thing you'll notice about the way I tend to organize my camp is that there's a lot of 5x5s. That's because you can stick a 3x3 workshop in the middle and surround it by whatever goods uh, it requires as input products, which I find very convenient. Um, and occasionally I like to make little communicating passageways between them so you can get around faster. 
admittedly, it's not a very militaristically sound idea, but I have yet to fight military that makes my plan not work very well. I haven't died to an invasion or anything. Okay. Um, what I would like to do is also... Notice how I left this one here? Um, that's because I intend to dig a pathway that takes you down a floor right by the entrance and takes you into, say, a grand hall or something where you can eat more easily and uh, maybe an attached dormitory on the other side so you can sleep really easily. Uh, yeah, so let's just keep digging out some more rooms for the various workshops. And at the very end of all of these is going to be my uh, my actual mining camp. Mine Kampf, if you will. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, I don't have to pre queue this many uh, tasks for my miners. I can pause the game at any time I please. So, really, I could stop this and then have them get go to work. I just feel like this. Ooh, you know what this is? At my same depth, there's a pre dug out hole into some basalt that eventually gives way to some water. I think what I'm going to do is treat this area... I mean, the thing is, that means basalt is probably not very far away. Normally, you have to go down to depth 7 or so to, to reach uh, metal, or any kind of raw metal. But if you dig into a big enough mountain, you can typically find it at much shallower depths. And that seems to be the case of what's happened to me here. Alright. So a little bit less regular with my tunnel system here, but that's fine. And all giving rise to this, which is going to be my end of tunnel or end of hallway tunneling site where I begin to dig deeper into the earth from. I think that is a reasonable start for painting the corridors, so we'll let the miners go to work on that. And that's it! Uh, the only thing left, and you'll notice this, is that builders, early on especially, have, like, nothing to do. Because, well, I don't have the resources to build anything yet. My solution to that is to redefine their profession. Typically, hmm, my solution to that is to redefine their profession. And I will discuss redefining professions in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this intro where I've spent almost a half hour showing you how to set up your first orders. We haven't hit play yet, so there's still quite a bit to go. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys shortly.